Welcome to Situational Awareness, a podcast brought to you by Militarnikom. I am your host Valentina Kuzik and today I am joining you from Iron Demo 2025 in Lviv. My first guest today will be uh, Boris Drozak, a co-founder of Rover Tech, a company producing UGVs. And more. Let's see what he has to tell. Boris, welcome to the show. Hello, thanks. Uh, we are very happy to see you today and we want to talk about your company, how it was founded and what are your key products. Sure, glad. So this is the first question. Tell us about your products. Um, okay, let's let's start with the company. Uh, and uh, basically we had the first flagman uh, product at 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new type of the mining machines, uh, basically below one ton, which is, was basically impossible. Uh, any the mining machine in the past considered from six uh, for various reasons and to withstand uh, tank mine and to actually make some uh, digging into the ground, like prepare it. Uh, so we found a way uh, and we found this way uh, just because we had a comrade on the battlefield. Uh, one of the co-founder of Robertech is a veteran mm -hmm. at his friend. Uh, we basically made first version for him, then evolve, evolve, evolve. Uh, we basically were just doing it for for our guy, you know, just just like this. And then we we found out that it actually works. It actually an innovation, and we created the company at 2023. Uh, this started for us the the military part and the humanitarian the mining part, and we evolve. Uh, we had lots of uh, battlefield um, uh, feedbacks, uh, friends. Uh, so we started making more uh, for uh, again for various reasons why <laughs> we started making a UGV uh, a logistical but we made a, a short class and in armor uh, so it can be stand FPVs mm -hmm. uh, it actually um, has capability more than one ton to to bring uh, goods on the battlefield not mm -hmm. just goods it's actually more than that and from this once we made the base uh, which is uh, recommended to use uh, by our army. Uh, we, we basically started making uh, other engineering models uh, with various of them and up to uh, warrior uh, part uh, weapons on the on the vehicle. So you mentioned you mostly work with UGV. Do you have any other products? Uh, so yeah, we basically it's and the company name is Rover Tech. Uh, we're basically focusing on uh, UGV technologies. Uh, the base should be perfect and then the engineering models around it up to like we even have uh, for our DSNS we have a product uh, called ZMI so we have a firefighter uh, also based on oh, the, wow. mm -hmm, the okay. first one in Ukraine okay uh, so uh, UGV is such a hype topic now yeah I've seen a lot of videos online on YouTube about your products and you know how the military is using them and uh, we had some of the comments especially about the demining robots that what happens if they uh, flip out can you tell us a bit more like if the, the, the mine blows uh, what happens with the machine itself uh, so uh, first of all, um, is me the miner machine can withstand tank mines without flipping out. Mm -hmm. uh, there is certain uh, engineering mines there in in the machine. <laughs> uh, why it uh, why it's not happening usually? But you can imagine uh, having a hamburger, several mines, uh, or like some sort of of uh, uh, custom mine. Um, in this case, the the splash will be much bigger and in this case the machine will stand like this mm -hmm. so it will not be able to okay. to make out it has the uh, a specific extra armory mm -hmm. here to to basically made it in, in this way and then uh wheels will uh, will help you to just put it down okay. and okay. go ahead okay we'll rotate and put it on the ground again yeah, yeah. And remotely you don't need to go into the into the field that's great. And from what I also know, um, your robots effectively work with anti-personal mines uh, yeah, and uh, anti-tank mines. As yeah, well. so this it covers both uh, any type of mine technically. Uh, an interesting fact, we invented a robot which is able to uh, demine uh, uh, 
It's called Butterflies in Ukraine, PFMs, and PFM1S. Uh, so we have 95 plus uh, percentage of successful demining, while uh, the best deminer in the world still, it's less than 20%. Mm -hmm. So we have currently capability to uh, demine uh, butterflies. So you mentioned you you are now mentioning uh, a topic of the specific innovation uh, you introduced within this UGV class. Yeah, uh, you've also mentioned in your interviews that there are no vehicles like this, demining vehicles, uh, UGVs like this uh, in the world. So can you name bullet by bullet what are the specifics innovation of those machines you are producing? Uh, so uh, not not specific like how it. How it's done, but I can say uh, what, is is exactly, what is exactly yeah what is market. exactly innovation. So basically, to demine the same amount of territory, you need some x money. Mm -hmm. But to to be able to do it, you actually need also xxx money, right? Uh, so the miner usually cost like eight hundred thousands euros plus. So if it's uh, MV10 from docking, it could be two millions hundred. Thousands. Mm -hmm. um, we are cost, talking dollars or euros. euros. Okay. In in case of um, uh, our UGV, it will cost you like if you even not in the military and it's a private company and suppers, the extra taxes, it will be like about twenty seven thousand dollars, which means it's in a forty to eighty times mm -hmm. cheaper just to start um, to start the mining. Then once you have a machine. You also need to consider like fuel, uh, yeah. how many people there. Maintaining it. Yeah, maintaining all, all, all of these nuances and also transporting. So if it's a 20 ton machine, mm -hmm. transporting from one field to another could cost you $3,000 just like that. With the machine we have, it's in about 15 to 18 times less fuel consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also uh, like it's basically just a car and a trailer. Uh, the trailer will will be like plus one liter or two liter per hundred kilometers so it's it's very cheap to transport it's very cheap to uh, start working and uh, fast to suffer because it's small you just mm -hmm. like it's two minutes to make it start doing something versus like you need about one hour you also need warm up of the system you also need to check them out each uh, 30 minutes because they made a lot of uh, dust it all goes to an engine you need like there is lots of nuances with the miners. It's very hard to make the miners. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's not that easy. Um, so th this, 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 I'm saying. Uh, and then imagine, uh, again, some things you can do. You can't, uh, for example, most of the big miners, no one will risk on a tank mine because you can lose it right away. So big miners, even if they can withstand, no one risking them. They buy ZMI. Even if they have a big machine, they buy ZMI. So ZMI goes first. Mm -hmm. Just to be sure that uh, tanks mine is demined, you find uh, the belt, and then you can do a big machine. Um, so, <laughs> those are all the nuances. Then it's electrical. It's also cheaper. You don't need to like. You don't need to spend again a lot of fuel on this. So is it hybrid? I've heard that it's on fuel. It's called, called combination type. Okay. And I also hear that it's really easy to repair it, yeah? You were saying that... Uh, yeah, it's actually the next, the next things I want to say. Um, and repair and uh, it's easy to not be destroyed uh, as well. So like, mm -hmm. it might, might you hear uh, in Ukraine, if you, if you sell the deminer, it might be destroyed by some FPV or like mm -hmm. Landsat. Uh, because it's big, it's easy to target and it's actually vulnerable. It's quite vulnerable. With the miner we have, uh, it's very hard to, to, to target it, even if you have a drone on an uh, optofiber, uh, because it's, uh, it's small uh, and the chains are bigger, and you make a lot of dust uh, around, mm -hmm. it's quite hard to actually to, to get to hit to it. it. Okay. Uh, it, it's easy to, to find, but it's hard to target it correctly. Oh. And you can destroy it only like with some sort of um, type of weapon. It's not easy to do it with regular because it's it's actually made to withstand mines, so it's it's not hard to withstand some. Do you have any kind of TV. models that are um, resistant to electronic warfare, or maybe I've heard even people um, dreaming about those machines you're producing on a fiber optic? No, so it's like I would say uh, 
it's a hard questions to say uh, on any podcast just because there's some intrigues. So we don't need fiber optics right now. Everything's fine without it. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about uh, how you cooperate with the Ukrainian military and definitely the product itself evolved uh, as a response to the need. Um, can civilians somehow, somehow use maybe farmers your product? So te technically civilians are not allowed to demine. Mm -hmm. uh, people need certification to do it and actually some are, you know, experience. <laughs> uh, though it's, we saw cases, of course. We saw cases... Um, uh, even like just someone from military used our product to help. So time to time what they do, they go around fields and roads mm -hmm. with our machine just to check out if there is no mines there. If there is no mines there, it most probably no mines in the field as well. Mm -hmm. But there are some tricks people start uh, noticing to not demine everything. And it's easy to use our machine because it's super cheap. So it's potentially dual use. It's it's actually it dual use. So yeah, we, it's not on. It's first of all not only mili military. Uh, for military, it's a bit different type of uh, and uh, tasks there. There is some of them. Uh, we also have. We already uh, had uh, contracts and with UN and with uh, Halo Trust, mm -hmm. and the biggest Ukrainian sub organization, and other. Uh, there is a bunch of um, worldwide. Uh, supper groups operating in Ukraine, they also started buying it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Are they it. actually using your products? Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Um, the next question would be about the investment. Um, so I've listened to some of your interviews and you mentioned that the, all the initial investment is basically your own and your co-founders. Uh, are you planning to scale? And if so, how are you preparing to this? So the, the start was quite hard for us. We didn't expect to... Actually, we just were helping friend, to be honest. But yeah, because you have a product, it, we have great team, honestly. Uh, it's just uh, a shame to not uh, like make make future uh, devices and uh, uh, military uh, products for for us for for Ukraine. Um, like I would say in, in this way, so we started with our own investments. We started to sell quite fast, just right away. Uh, even with the very first versions, which were far from from perfect, um, and we in a good track right now. We have big contracts. Uh, we already potential. Is it with Ukrainian government? Uh, not just Ukrainian government. Like lots of. There's so diverse. Honestly, like there's around around twenty five different uh, organizations and and clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm saying just about uh, you know like. Uh, institutional organizations, not just, you know, some little super mm -hmm. group, yeah. So it could be like uh, or, or unit uh, in uh, our military or our uh, Ministry of Defense, or it could be uh, other. There's so much of them, honestly. Um, so we're already in a good state. It's a private equity type of company, family type, because there is uh, everything in-house, mm -hmm. patents are in-house, you no know, investments uh, outside of the world. Uh, though, uh, despite we we actually making a lot this this year, mm -hmm. because we do also UGVs. Um, of course, the miners uh, it's much complicated to do, uh, much much complicated, much more compared to what Log logistics? to just logistical okay. UGV. Yeah, logistical UGV is much easier. It, it could could uh, like one to two probably, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, uh, so with all the contracts, we're actually in in okay position, but because we can we can just produce, produce, produce. You know, uh, though to scale to what we need in Ukraine, and what appears uh, world need with the, our the miner, uh, we are looking for partners. There's a bunch of uh, different uh, uh, markets where it's suited, and we're looking for partners there. Uh, maybe some joint ventures maybe a new types of product for the type of market because if it's a NATO it could be a bit different standards which might not be uh, the same you need some tweaks so uh, we wish you good luck and we hope that this podcast will help you draw the attention of potential investors and partners to your company thank you thank, thank you, you.